Well, let's dive into the let's Falcons right here. Jacob Aristotle, Kirk Cousins isn't going to win you a Super Bowl. He is a slightly above average quarterback. Check his record against teams above 500 in primetime games in the playoffs. Time will tell. If the Falcons win the Super Bowl, it won't be because of him directly. He shrinks in big games. Ooh, shrinkage. Uh-oh. Eviscerating Kirk Cousins. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Uh, is this guy a Falcons fan or not? Or a Saints fan. Uh, yeah, I don't know what he is. Uh, but uh, hey there, Aristotle. Okay, right. I hear what you're saying to a degree, okay? This is a really interesting conversation. It really is. Now, I don't even know where I want to start with this. Here's the first thing I would say. All right, the first thing I'm going to say, I don't love the whole primetime 500 record game, all that crap. You know, one, the primetime thing's overrated. Here's the first reason I would say. The biggest ratings on every Sunday are the 425 game, and he's played really good in a lot of those games, but nobody knows. So, But there's more people watching that game than the Sunday night or Monday night football game. The ex- other thing I would throw into about the primetime performance and all that, you know, I think if we do- go back in time and you really unpack that, you're going to see in a lot of those primetime games – Guess what? Kirk Cousins' team wasn't as good as the team he was playing in that game. So, you know, I, I, again, it's, it's easy to go, oh, he doesn't play well in primetime. But I think we go back and look at the list, you'd go, well, they definitely weren't supposed to win this game, and they weren't supposed to win that game, and they weren't supposed to win this game, and they were a shitty team here, and they were playing a much better team. They weren't supposed to win, right? And I think that's just – it's become a narrative that I, you know, I don't agree with there, right? So I don't, I don't love that. Now, the Falcons, the Super Bowl, all of that, okay. I, I am one to say you can win a Super Bowl with Kirk Cousins. Yeah, you need a team. It's not You can't do Mahomes or Josh Allen here and go carry the squad. It's four guys in the league like that. Exactly probably. right. I mean, there's like 10 guys in the history of football. Right, right. So, like, everybody's going to stop, like, thinking they're going to get that. Building okay. a good team still matters. Bill, it's so that simple. This is where I, – I, I'm glad you're leading me into the like, – this is – this is where, you know, this is where I think Brady and Manning and Mahomes are erasing our memories of like world past of, you know, teams with a good quarterback used to go to the Super Bowl, right? And they used to do that a lot. Now maybe that'll be less and less as we go on here. But there was, you know, you know, again, I, I certainly didn't think the Rams with Jared Goff were supposed to be like, you know, oh, Jared Goff, he's going to take him to the Super Bowl, right? They had a damn good team, right? Most people didn't think that about Matthew Stafford, right, until he went to the Rams, <laughs> right? Most people had these thoughts, well, he'll never win a Super Bowl. He can't win a big game. He never only won one playoff game with the Lions. He got with a good team. Look what the hell happened, right? Now, I, was, I, nev- I always was a believer in, in that. But, you know, I think, again – I think we're a little stuck in in that. You know, Peyton Manning's the man, right? He's great. Again, in 2015, he was the, the last-rated quarterback in football. They went to the Super Bowl. It wasn't because of Peyton Manning. It was because of the rest of the football team. The Seahawks went to the Super Bowl twice. It wasn't because Russell Wilson was carrying the squad. Go back and watch all 16 games of those two years. They played unreal defense, ran the ball, and asked Russell to make, like, three plays a game, right? So we're forgetting that. Joe Flacco and the Ravens, right? I mean, Colin Kaepernick and the 49ers. It's just, I think Brady yeah. has really erased our memory of that a little bit. And so I do think you can win a Super Bowl with Kirk Cousins. And again, he's not a superstar, but he is a really damn, damn good quarterback. Top 10 ish, top 12 ish for sure. And it's not easy to find those guys, let alone the top three or four guys that you mentioned already before. So. I'm a big fan in a lot of ways of Atlanta making a move for a guy that they go, wait, he's a proven commodity. He fits our offense. He knows our offense. Raheem's worked with them before, right? The Zach Robinson is coming from a coaching staff that with Sean McVay, who's with Kirk Cousins, he worked with Kevin O'Connell too, who's probably told them a bunch of things about how awesome Kirk Cousins is to work with, right? So they got a guy that they liked and they know is good and can lead their team, and now they're going to build the team around that. So that's what I would say to that, Aristotle. So Pete did some research. Yeah. Jacob Aristotle is a Vikings fan. Okay. So he's, you might be feeling just a little, you know, yeah, scorned sure. right now. Right. And I, I, feel, I get it. And uh, it will be on Kirk to win some big games this year, undeniably. But Damn, you look at him with that roster. I mean, that that team should be really good. Atlanta's yeah. roster is legit, right? 
I mean, now you got the quarterback. I love the Darnell Mooney move. Now, I mean, to open the field up because a little th- th- that to me was their problem. We run the ball. We have Pitts, right? He's a tight end. Even though he's awesome and athletic, he's still not a guy that you go, oh, he's going to open the field and stretch the stretch the field that way. Drake London's not that kind of guy. Drake London is big body, awesome route runner, going to catch a bunch of ten and fifteen yard passes and just tear your ass up that way, right? So now they got a guy where it's like, ooh, they're playing the run hard. Ooh, they're all over Drake London and some of our ten and twelve yard con. Right. Oh, here goes Darnell Mooney deep down the middle. Boom. Touchdown. So I love that aspect of it. The defense was already damn good. It was top 10 ish all year last year. Then because of these moves, now they feel like at number eight, they can allocate themselves to best defensive player available. Pass rusher, Dallas Turner, maybe something like that. I haven't got to the pass rusher. I think you're right right? on it. You're Right? right on it. So that's where I like that. Right. And I will say, as we dive into this more, my thoughts on this trade. I feel like the more time I had to think about it, the more really what happened is I started to talk about it. I went on a radio a few times and did that. And as I was saying things out loud, you know, sometimes it hits you when you say it out loud and you hear yourself, right? Because, Connor, I had been a little bit of like, man, I can't believe Kirk Cousins is going to leave that that formula. And wow, Atlanta's going to take, you know, a little bit of a risk here on a guy that's older and Achilles, right? And all of that. And I, I kind of thought about it through that prism and thinking that Kirk Cousins really wouldn't pull the trigger on I this I wasn't move. sure either. I, I didn't know if he would either, and I didn't know anything substantially from anybody I trusted in the league to know that was happening. I'd heard some of the rumors and all that, right? You know, so I was kind of thinking, and I was thinking like, man, why, if you're Kirk Cousins, you're going to throw away Kevin O'Connell and the Vikings offense and Justin Jefferson and Mario Addison, right? But as time went on and I started to talk about it more, I started to look at, you know, Jacob, Aristotle, again, hey, I, I think you can win with Kirk Cousins. But I, I sit here and I do go, I, I don't know what the hell Minnesota was thinking. I really don't. I don't. Now, again, I know they want Mahomes or Josh Allen or something like that. They want an elite quarterback, you know. Uh, you know, the, the GM said that. Kwasi Adolfo Mensa, right? He said that uh, two years ago. And... I, like, sure, I want one of those guys or one of those elite guys too, but where are you going to find it? Who, who is it? Who's it going to be? Like, you let go of a proven commodity top 10-ish type quarterback where your offense was basically unstoppable for two years, right? You have a big-time receiver and a coach who knows – a quarterback, a coach who knows how to get the most out of that quarterback and the quarterback who can handle the most of what the, the coach has to offer as far as the offense – and you throw that away when you look at the rest of the team and go, damn, the team's pretty good. I like some of the moves they made. That, to me, is I, I think of Vikings blunder. I really do. And, and here's the point I made. If we don't hear the numbers of what they offered Kirk Cousins here in the next, like, 24 to 48 hours, that means they gave him something that was not even respectable. Not competitive. And will tell you that they didn't even really want him, right? But the head coach wanted him, for sure. And He's there's obviously it at the combine. There's a disconnect. And that, to me, is like, watch out for dysfunction going forward here. And this is why guys like Ben Johnson of the Detroit Lions, Shanahan, whatever, other offensive coaches in the, his- in the future are going to go, I want last say on roster control. Right, because here I am. I'm an awesome coach. I know how to evaluate quarterbacks. That's why you got me. I'm telling you, I want this guy, and we're awesome, and we're just going to be even better, and we're going to not offer them the extra three or four million dollars a year to keep them here and let some other team swoop in. I think that's a big mistake by the Minnesota Vikings. Well, and then it's you know kind of thrown on the lap of the head coach. You figure it out now. I think that's the frustration part, right? And we saw in a very very different capacity, Mike Vrabel. We never thought he would be on the market this year. That felt like it was always a roster control battle. Kevin O'Connell is a great coach, and it's going to be very interesting to see how they figure this out. Yo, yo, homies, what's up? I know it's the offseason, but it's never the offseason on Chris Sims Unbutton. Me and Ahmed Farid are going to be here for it all. You know we got free agency. We're going to break it all down. The draft, the rankings of positions, of course, we're going to unpack it all. Hit subscribe, get to my free agency reactions, 2024 draft rankings and more. Thanks again for watching. Peace out, homies. See you soon.